Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. <clears throat> and this is question number four from the June 2013 R paper um, from NXL. This is from the um, old C3 uh, papers. And this question here is about functions. So one of the students on the channel has requested me to answer it. It's a pretty straightforward question, but I will answer it anyway. So the functions f and g are defined by f of x or you can say f is such that x maps to 2 times the modulus of x plus 3. Now this notation and this notation basically you could take them to mean exactly the same thing. If you see this or this you treat them exactly the same way. There's no difference in what you have to do in terms of solving the question. So it's just like an alternative way of writing the function f of x sometimes f and you got this colon x is such that 2 is modulus of x plus 3 and x is an element of all real numbers so that's the domain of our original function f we want to find the range of the function now the domain of a function are all the x values that it can take and in this case x can be any real number and this you can put any any value for x in here and it won't cause any problems with this function it's defined for all values of x. The range of a function is what happens after x has gone into the function and this function equation or instruction has, has been carried out and you think what is the result of that? What can come out? What's the output of that? Now, in this case, we can see that we have the modulus function. It means anything that goes into this modulus if it's positive, it stays as it is. If it's negative, it becomes positive. So the modulus of 3 is 3. But the modulus of negative 3 will also be 3. It won't be negative 3. So we can see here that the modulus of x will always be greater than or equal to 0. It can never be less than 0 because whatever goes in here is going to become positive. If it's negative, if you put 0 in here, it will stay as 0. So that's the most that this can be. So the modulus of x must be greater than or equal to 0 always. And we know that 2 times the modulus of x will also be greater than or equal to 0. You're just multiplying those numbers by 2. And therefore, 2 times the modulus of x plus 3 is going to be greater than or equal to 3. It will never be less than 3. So that means the range of this function, okay, we can say, the, um, we can say f of x is greater than or equal to 3. We can say uh, y is greater than or equal to 3. Both of those are, both of those are correct ways of saying that. Okay, a nice way to um, also kind of deal with range is to do a sketch. So if you were to sketch this function, okay, if you were to sketch this function, just a little sketch just to see what happens. Now, the modulus function, what happens to it is when it's like this, um, when you have the modulus is just the x is inside it, not the whole function inside the modulus. To sketch it, you would you would draw as if you're drawing y equals 2x plus 3, okay, first. But you stop at the x-axis, at the y-axis, sorry. So you stop at the y-axis. So y equals 2x plus 3 will have a gradient of 2, and it will pass through 3. So it's going to cross the y-axis at 3. And if the modulus wasn't there, the x-axis it would cross when y is 0, which is minus 1 and 1.5. That's where it would cross if it, if it wasn't the modulus. But this graph is going to go like this. So as if it's going to go through these two points. But what's going to happen is going to stop at this 3. And then it's going to carry on on this side, like reflected upwards. Okay, so you can say that this half of the graph is like y equals 2x plus 3, and this half of the graph is like y equals minus 2x plus 3. Because this is where, you know, you could take the negative kind of um, version of that. So it's going to look something like this. And we can see that its range, the range is all the y values it can take. We can see that its range is basically all values of x, which are, oh, sorry, all values of y, which are greater than 3. Okay, it's going to continue up from there. That's the lowest it can go. So you can say the range is y is greater than or equal to 3. All right, so that's just a bit of an ex explanation for that range business. Okay, so there's the answer to four part A. Now, four part B, it says find f, g of one. 
Okay, so we have the function f and g, I've got it written down here. So basically what it means is find what have find what you get when you put g1 inside f. So you, you put one inside g, one goes inside the function g, and then whatever comes out of that goes inside the function f. Okay, so we can say it's f, and then you're going to put one in fi inside function g. So it's f of 3 minus 4 times 1. Okay, so this is, this is g1 here. This is when you put 1 instead of x in function g. So that's going to be f, and this is 3 minus 4, which is minus um, 1. Okay, 3 minus 4, which is minus 1. So we're going to put minus 1 now into function f. So that's going to be 2 times minus 1 plus 3. Now remember what I said, <clears throat> this becomes 2 times positive 1 plus 3, because whatever goes inside here becomes um, if it's positive, it stays as it is. If it's negative, it becomes positive. So that's going to give you 5. So therefore, we can say f g of 1 is equal to 5. Okay, so there's part b done. Now for part c, it says find the inverse function um, of g. Now the inverse of a function is found um, by simply swapping the y and the x around and then rewriting or re or, or what's it called what's it called um rearranging the formula so basically function g you got g of x equals 3 minus 4x so the first step is you call it y equals 3 minus 4x second step is wherever you see x you call it y wherever you see y you call it x so x equals 3 minus 4y and now we're going to make this y the subject so we're going to add 4y to both sides subtract x from both sides and then divide both sides by 4. So we can say that function inverse of g of x is equal to 3 minus x divided by 4 and its domain will also be all real numbers. Okay, The inverse function and the original function they're both straight line graphs so the inverse function will look like this 3 minus 4x it's going to look something like this and you can see its range is all real numbers. The domain is of the inverse is the same as the range of the original and the range of the original will go from minus infinity to infinity so therefore the range of the inverse function will be all real numbers it's always best to write the range next to the inverse function if you're asked to find it um it's always best to write the range as well with it even though if you don't, sorry the domain even though they don't ask you to do it always write the domain of the inverse function when you find the inverse even if they don't ask you to do it it's always best to do it that's most complete and then part D says solve the equation g of gx plus g of x all squared equals zero. So first thing we've got to do is find what g of gx is. And then we've got to take the function g of x and square it and equate it to zero. So we've got to find this first, which is basically when you got to put g of x inside function g. And then you've got to add the square of g of x, which is going to be 3 minus 4x all squared and you're going to equate that to zero so let's do this now we're going to find g of 3 minus 4x plus let's get this ready that's 9 if you square this 9 you multiply those together that gives you minus 20 minus 24 x plus 16 x squared equals zero square this multiply those together double it and square the last term and now um, we can find um, g of 3 minus 4x just replace this x here with 3 minus 4x. You, you substitute this inside itself, basically. So 3 minus 4, and then you have 3 minus 4x. So this is 3 minus 4, and you put g inside that x. Replace the x with whatever is inside this bracket. So replace this x with 3 minus 4x, and then you've got plus 9 minus 24x plus 16x squared equals 0. So this gives you 3 minus 12 plus 16x plus 9 minus 24x plus 16x squared equals 0. So you have 3 minus 2, 12, which is minus 9 plus 9. They cancel out. You're left with 16x minus 24x, which is minus 8x. So you've got 16x squared minus 8x equals 0. You can divide both sides by 8, which gives you 2x squared minus x equals 0. To solve this, we can take our x as common x times 2x minus 1 equals 0. 
So either x equals 0 or x equals a half. 2x minus 1 equals 0, x equals 1, 2x equals 1, x equals a half. So we have now the solutions to this equation. All right, so this question was pretty much a straightforward question. Not really too much um, complicated stuff in here. An easy, how many marks? 5 plus 2 plus 2 is 5, 11 marks there for you. Um, so I hope that you understood whatever you had issues with. And, um, you know, thank you for watching. Other questions from this particular paper, if, when I get around to answering them, if I'm requested to answer them, will be found in the playlist that will appear in this section over here. Other questions from the topic of functions from P3 in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and the linked video here will take, take you to or will teach you how to find things in my channel that you might be looking for in an easy way. Thank you for watching and see you soon.